Virginia Satir claims that poor individual self-esteem is at the root of most family problems. It's the therapist's job to increase individual self-esteem, which will in turn improve family functioning. Do you agree with Satir's claim? Why or why not? And how do you think individual self-esteem is related to family functioning? This is Isabella again, and these are the prompts I'm going to respond to for this week's critical thinking discussion. Virginia Satir was one of the leading um, experiential family therapists or humanistic family therapist. So I'd just like to take a quick moment just to review a bit of the assumptions of the humanistic um, experiential family therapy approaches. There are four approaches that fall broadly uh, within the humanistic therapy family. Um, these, of, of course, uh, are uh, Satir's model, uh, symbolic experiential therapy by um, Carl Whitaker, uh, emotionally, focused, foc uh, emotionally focused couples therapy by Sue Johnson, and of course, there is David Schwartz's uh, internal family system. So one of the common practices and uh, assumptions across these humanistic approaches include, uh, first, uh, they target emotional transaction primarily. So when you're working with a family, you are looking uh, at the emotional system of the family uh, and focusing on the emotional elements of the system. Um, second, um, there's very much emphasis on the warmth and empathy uh, on the part of the therapist, as well as the use of, as well as the therapist's use of self, uh, the therapist's presence, uh, and the therapist's way of being um, in the room. And there is also an emphasis on uh, on the individual and the um, and and the family uh, f uh, level of functioning. So in goal setting, um, they will emphasize on the individual level of functioning, um, as well as the as well as uh, at the family level of functioning. So now I'd like to talk about the therapeutic relationship in Satir's model, which I think is the hallmark of her approach. If you get a chance to see Virginia Satir in action, well, at least in her videos because she already passed, and most of us have seen it. Her presence is just unmistakable. It's so unique, it's, it's, it's a signature. And it's the reason why she's unforgettable uh, and a big figure in the field and called the mother of family therapy because a lot of her way of interacting with people really comes from these very fundamental assumptions which are humanistic in origin. And these humanistic beliefs of her just permeate the room and is really much part of her approach. And so when working from this approach, these fundamental assumptions really are at the heart of the relationship. Uh, Virginia Satir, number one, believe that everyone is unique and is worthy of respect. Number two, that um, all people um, have a ten natural tendency toward positive growth. Um, so it's very much like uh, Carl Rogers' person-centered therapy. Um, there can be obstacles to this growth, but when we remove the obstacles, this natural tendency will occur. And so it's very much optimistic, very much positive. It's a very much positivistic way of uh, viewing human nature, human beings. And third, um, all, 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 all people have the resources to, to, this, um, to this growth. And it's very much palpable in the room. And fourth, um, fourth everything impacts um, and is impacted by everything else. And so it's it's really a basic um, systemic view in that everything is interrelated and that everyone is affecting one another. And finally, um, the therapeutic relationship, the therapeutic process itself, um, in that it is really a relationship between, it's an interact, uh, it's really an interaction between the client and and the therapist. Um, it's a human relationship in that each person is responsible for um, for himself or herself in the in the therapeutic relationship. Uh, everyone's responsible for how they're interacting, how they're relating and communicating, and also that includes the therapist. So um, these are the basic assumptions that uh, are foundational to how the therapist, how a therapist engages a client uh, at the very fundamental and philosophical level. So Satya shares these assumptions with uh, other humanistic theorists, therapi therapists, in that they um, they 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 engage the family um, therapy, the family relationship, the therapeutic relationship. Um, in such a way that there is really warmth and humanity that is unmistakable. 
And so the therapist is a fully engaged, warm human being. Uh, and empathy is really um, the first and foremost um, uh, in that relationship. Also, there is an incredible um, sense of conveying hope um, that comes from her assumptions. And she also talks about making contact, making emotional contact. And of course, this is done in a very authentic way. Um, um, very authentic, engaged way. And, and um, finally, there's uh, an emphasis on, on um, establishing credibility in the sense that uh, the therapist should be able to instill hope um, in the client that, that, that um, the therapist can be helpful to them. So now let's proceed to the question at hand, which really is very central to Satir's work and is probably one of the elements that is most well-known is the concept of self-esteem or self-worth. Um, Virginia Satir made this uh, really an important part of the therapeutic process in that she focuses on building the sense of self-esteem uh, or sense of self-worth within her client and um, in the ther uh, in the therapeutic process or in the in the um, assessment conceptualization process, um, it is really looking at uh, to what extent does the client value themselves, because often it's going to be very much part of a of a place. In that, if um, if someone doesn't value themselves and doesn't have a strong sense of um, self esteem or self or self worth, then they're likely uh, going to be struggling in their relationships, and um, and in other areas of life. And so, looking at this and strengthening this part is really an important um, part of the therapeutic process. So. Um, is it the therapist's job to increase the individual self-esteem, which will uh, in turn impact um, or uh, improve the, the family functioning? Yes. Um, Virginia Satir uh, often used this metaphor of, of the gardener in which she says that the, um, she thinks that the parents need to be good gardeners. And that being said, what does a gardener do? Um, a gardener takes seeds and it never says, if, if you don't grow in the way that I want you to, I'm gonna throw you out. They don't do that. Instead they say, instead they do, what they do is they take the, this wonderful seed and they, um, they say, um, now I gotta find out what, uh, are the, what are the growing conditions of this? What is the temperature? What is the light? What is, um, what is the fertilizer? And um, so that's what Virginia would like to see parents do with their children. And she does this um, in therapeutic session. And her objective really is to be able to relate to the individual in ways that will um, release that individual's uh, inner directional, uh, forward moving, creative self-healing uh, power. And when this philosophy is lived out in the therapy session with the individual and with the family, then they are, they are empowered and um, their developmental capabilities are released for self-exploration and self-discovery, which results in uh, constructive change and even growth. So it's really, um, it's really an attitude uh, a philosophy or a way of being with the individual or with the family rather than doing something uh, to or for the family or for the individual. So how an individual feels about himself or herself um, is really what makes a significant difference um, in behavior. Furthermore, Virginia Satir puts this succinctly in one of her interviews in which she says um, that when working with a with an individual or a family, that the therapist really is doing a sacred job because, because she is connecting, he or she is connecting to the light of another person. And that requires the utmost responsibility and um, a lot of caring. And she even uh, goes on to saying that, and that um, every time you touch another human being, that that person is going to touch another person too. So how is individual self related to family functioning? The more you appreciate yourself, 
the less you will have to depreciate anyone else. Or put it another way, the more you can appreciate yourself, the more you can appreciate others. So that concludes my discussion and I can't wait for your feedback. Bye.